kuja kwa Enoch the only uh, the three descendants ama ni one descendant from ama two descendants from Adam Adam came Enoch na nikana kukumbushana kwamba there's a difference wa Enoch aliyezaliwa na Kay na Enoch ambaye ni uzao wa Seth sababu kuja kuangalia uh, uzao wa Enoch ambaye alizaliwa katika uzao wa Seth ni miaka kadhaa inapita na unakuta kuna watoto kadhaa wamezaliwa kabla Enoch apatikane ndio unakuta Judah na Dombe katika verse uh, 14 and Enoch also the seven from Adam unakuta Biblia inakupatia tofautisho kubwa sana ni wewe tu kwa makini uweze kushika hii maana unakuta verse 14 na kwamba and Enoch also the seven from Adam already pale kuna distinction ya kwamba the Enoch the book of Jude is speaking about is the seven from Adam kesabu Adam Seth ukuja kwa hesabu utakuta kwamba Ed Enoch alikuwa ni uzao wa saba lakini ukirudi kwa Kay yeye ni wa tatu maana kutoka kwa Adam Enoch wa pili ala, sorry ukitoka kwa Adam Kay ni wa kwanza alafu Enoch wa tatu so this differentiates you was that when you but there are two Enochs and two generations ambazo zilitoka kwa Seth na Enoch na kwa hivyo wakati Judah anapokuwa na sababu bad Enoch the seven anazungumzia Enoch kwa lineage ya Seth ambapo maandiko nasema kwamba aliishi miaka 300 na na akatembea na Mungu hakukuweko so uh, unless Mungu akupatie neema na kibali uweze kupata maabu fanye bidii fanye utafiti utakuta kwamba Enoch katika ile muda alipotembea na Mungu Biblia haituandikwa undani kile Enoch alikuwa anafanya wakati alikuwa anatembea na Mungu kwa ile muda alitembea na Mungu ama Enoch kulikuwa na nini maana bila sababu kwamba and Enoch talked with God and he was no more so hiyo ndio Biblia inatuambia hiyo ndio fupi na uchache Biblia inatuzungumzia lakini sasa unapopata kitabu cha Enoch anakuja kukuelezea kwa undani within those years ambayo alitembea na Mungu what actually happened alipata revelation gani na ni nini Mungu alimuonesha kwa siku za Enoch na siku ambazo zijazo sababu ukikuta kitabu cha Enoch hapo utafanikiwa uweze ukipata utakuta kuna mambo mengi sana ambayo Enoch amezungumza katika kile kitabu na kwa sababu ya hiyo ndio unakuta hata Jude alikuwa anapeana reference kwa kitabu cha Enoch maana wakati wa Jude wakati kwa wakati ile miaka kina Jude alipokuwa hai uh, kitabu cha Enoch kilikuwa kinadhaminiwa na kilikuwa kinakubalika lakini miaka kama mia, miaka kama karne kama tano, sita, saba, kumi hivi baada ya eh, Jude kuandika ndipo sasa unakuta kwamba wa viongozi wa kanisa la Katoliki waliketi kwenye kikao wakaamua kutoa zile vitabu watakao katika Biblia na wakatoa zile vitabu maana sasa kwa zile vitabu nyingi zao ni story ambazo hazina msingi yoyote na pili wakatoa kitabu cha Enoch kwa sababu Enoch ilikuwa inaingia ndani kabisa katika ulimwengu wa rohoni na kufunua mambo yalipokuwa kitendeka katika ulimwengu wa rohoni na dunia kimapepo jinsi ilivyokuwa so ikakuwa ni kama hawakukubaliana sana na kitabu cha Enoch na ndio sababu unakuta kwamba kilitolewa katika Biblia lakini wakati wa kina Jude wakati wa kina James the apostles the book of Enoch ilikuwa valid valued na ilikuwa valid na waliweza kusoma ndio maana unakuta Jude anaandika na anapeana reference to the book of Enoch so anaendelea kwa basi tuta sababu kwamba and Enoch also the same from Adam prophesy of, of of this same behold the lord comes with 10000 of his saints ukisimama tu pale peke yake uh, Jude already anakuambia kile Enoch aliandika na ile ufumo Enoch aliandika na unakuta Enoch akiandika wakati huu ili alikuwa the seventh from Adam alikuwa the seventh from Adam so whatever alikuwa anazungumzia alikuwa anazungumzia mambo ya siku zijazo many years ahead hapo anazungumzia wakati wake alikuwa anazungumzia many years ahead what was going to happen so ukikuja kuangalia nataka nikupatie kwa hii prophecy ambayo anazungumzia na utakuta pia John the apostle not John the Baptist John the apostle pia alitumia the same verse na Mungu alitumia the same verse kupatia uh, John the apostle this revelation. Maana nataka tuende katika kitabu cha Revelation ndio nikupatie mali nikupatie cross reference 
na Enoch verses 14. Uh, sorry, yeah. Na sorry, na Jude verses 14. So before to end the man, nataka kwa sababu nataka tuangalia the book of uh, Revelation chapter 19, nataka kwanza tuhuti katika uh, Revelation chapter 1 to 19, so that to shike where we are going. Now the book of Revelation, turn, just turn the page, give us a page, utaingia Revelation, utaenda bali. Give us a two page, uh, utakuta umeingia the book of Revelation. So to answer na Revelation chapter 1 verses 1, so the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, Ebu ni sima mapo kwanza. I always want us to move together with understanding. Ndi uweza kuelewa what you are talking about. So to answer, the revelation of Jesus Christ, full stop. So hapa, uh, John the Apostle anandika sa kwamba, ufunu wa Yesu Christo. What John is writing in the book of Revelation sa kwamba, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whatever I'm writing is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is not anything else. Ni Yesu amefunuliwa ndo ninaandika hii maandiko ya ninaandika. Alafu anaenda kwa kusema kwamba which God gave to him. So tukisimama pale kuunganisha mstari mbili the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him. Basi kwa kifupi kwa lugha rais kile uh, John the Apostle sa kwamba ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo ambaye Mungu alimpatia Yesu Kristo. Nataka ushike kwamba ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo Amba mungu alichukua fluwa kristo, haka ampatia Yesu kristo, ambe shika Yesu kristo. This is revelation in fluwa kukuhusu. That's what verses 1 na zomuzia. Alafu anasua kwamba, the purpose, kwa nini mungu alipatia Yesu, fluwa kukuhusu ya mwenyewe, the purpose, the purpose of that revelation was to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So point ya kwanza katika verse 1 ya sawa kwamba Mungu alichukua ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo kama kitabu akachukua ufunuo wa Yesu Kristo akapatia Yesu shika hii ufunuo kukuhusu na Yesu naye alipokuwa akipatia Yesu alikuwa anakuonesha mambo ambayo yatakayokuja na Yesu naye akachukua kulingana na verse 1 amuoneshe watumishi wake all the servant of Jesus Christ Ndiyo Yesu alikuwa na wapatia, waweze kuwana ulo funumbu wa mempatia, waweze kuelewa mambo ya liyo kuwa na tanajua kuja kutendeka. Mana vila sa wakomba, uh, God gave unto him to show him unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Nataka ushike neno pia, must, not may, must. Wala mba ni wasomu wa kingereza, when you put the word must, it means that there is nothing that can change. Whatever has been determined must come to pass. Lazima itendeke. So, John the Apostle has said, this is the revelation that Jesus Christ, uh, of the Christians which God gave unto Jesus Christ to show his servants of things that must shortly come to, uh, to pass. And he sent as signified by his angel unto his servant John. So, yes, bada kupatio funuo wake, ili aoneshe watumishu wake, yes, na kachukua funuo, akapatia malaika ampeleke kwa John the Apostle. So tukianzia verses 2, verses 2 na zumuzia sasa vile John ameanza sasa kurekod na kuandika yile ufunu alipata. So why am I going here? Naenda hapa kwa sabu eleo kwamba this is a revelation that God gave to John the Apostle. Now, turudi katika eno chapter verses 14. Alafu mbwa kwa kujia the book of Revelation, verses 19, chapter, yeah, chapter 19, verses 1. We are studying the book of Enoch. So tukienda, uh, Revelation, chapter 19. Ukienda kwa chapter 19, the whole of chapter 19, uh, if you have time, utakuta kwamba inazungumuzia vile Yesu atakavyo rudi. Hii ningependa ukiweza usome kivyako yote completely, yoweza kuelewa. Mimi sijenza kukusomea, lakini za kusoma tukidoko, 
kuanzia verses 10 utasoma verses 10 and 11 and 12 lakini sasa wewe ukipata nafasi enda soma Revelation chapter 19 so Revelation chapter 19 verses 10 and and I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not I'm thy servant of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus Christ worship God for the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew them but himself. And he was called to the vesture deep in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed up, followed him upon white horse clothes, uh, upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So kiendelea kusoma na kuta kwamba end no end the book of Enoch uh, Jude chapter uh, sorry the book of Jude verses 14 na sawa kwamba and Enoch also the same from Ad prophesied of this is behold the Lord comes with 10000 of saints so from verses <coughs> so man, from verses 10 in the book of Enoch chapter 19 inazungumzia vile sasa hii maandiko ambayo Jude amezungumzia it is the same scriptures and by the Apostle John, I the book of Revelation. So simply be written in the book we cannot ignore the book of Enoch. But in the book of Enoch, cross-reference, one of the things that Enoch was spoken of, zinekua quoted somewhere else. Now, in the book of John the Apostle, how do you know him? It is only until John the Apostle ended up the island of Patmos, when he was the island of Patmos, when he was the the Mumba converted this revelation about Jesus Christ coming with the saints from heaven. Sansa, John converted that revelation to a Kandika. Like in Enoch, even before Yeshua from Salaban, even before Yeshua from Fuke, even before Yeshua was a new Akama Mtoto na Mary, Enoch Tiari alikuwa mona this prophecy. Na Enoch Tiari alikuwa mena kili na Kandika kasema kwamba. This is what is going to happen in the future. Because I believe that some and all the course of the same from Adam prophesied and told Nabi Kwahi Mambo it a kuja kutimia. And so my brothers and my sisters, even today, he bado haicha timia. He verses 14 here, the book of Jude, haicha timia. It is something that is going to happen in the future. Because you kwele mtu wa mungu kwamba, tu kiangalea pale yu verses 14 kidogo, ingaje hatutenda ndani kidogo lakini tukiangalia kwa kwa kwa, kwa uchache unakuta kwamba this thing ndio inaweza ku happen it simply means that Yesu atakuwa amerudi mara ya pili kama mwizi according to the book of the Thessalonians na atakuja kuiba kanisa lake walio kopo walio takazo na watembea katika utakatifu hao ndio watakuja kunyakuliwa na Kristo na watenda pamoja na mbinguni na watakapoenda haimaanishi dunia itaisha dunia na mitindo yake na desturi zake na utamaduni kila kitu itaendelea kama kawaida maana maandiko nasema kwamba Yesu atakapokuja walio kufa katika Kristo Yesu watafufuka kwanza na watakao kuwa wako hai ama si ambao tuko hai tutabadilishwa tufanane naye twende mbinguni na tutakapokaa pale mbinguni tutakaa ile muda ambao Mungu amekusudia na kisha sasa baada ya kule muda Mungu amekusudia ndio Revelation chapter 19 itakuja kutimia mahali pia Enoch aliprophesy Yakoba sasa Kristo Yesu atarudi akiwa amefuata na wateule akiwa akiwa ameandikwa the word of God akiwa na nguvu yake imetumbukizwa kwenye damu sasa ndio hiyo maandiko itatimia na wakati atakapokuwa kirudi kulingana na verse 14 mtu wa Mungu utakuwa na mambo mengi itakuwa imetendeka duniani kwa mfano hii mambo tunaona ya Israeli kwa saa hizi tunajiandaa tu kuelekea mahali maandiko yatabiriwa Maana utakuta kwamba itakuja kufika kiwango wa Israeli watakuja kuwatapigana itafika kiwango uh, watakapopigana wapigane kabisa hekalu lazima litakuja kujengwa on the temple mount itakapojengwa ule mpiga Kristo na the false prophets watakuja watasimama watahakikisha kwamba wa Israeli wameacha kupigana kila mtu watahakikisha kwamba kutakuja kuwa na amani na hiyo amani ambayo antichrist ataleta itawezesha wa Israeli kupata amani na hekalu itajengwa kule Jerusalem na baada ya hekalu kujengwa baada ya miaka 3 na nusu hicho ndicho tutakuja kuingia kwa ndani lakini wacha nikuzie Jumatatu kwa verse 14 baada ya miaka 3 na nusu 
wa Israeli watafunguka macho maana katika kitabu cha Daniel kinasema kwamba utakapoona ile chokiso katika mahali patakatifu maana huyu antichrist atasimama katika ile hekalu na ataimsist ya kwamba atolewe ndio sacrifice sababu Israeli watakuwa wamemwamini maana ameleta amani watakuwa wanamuona kama Mesaya na atakapoonekana kama Mesaya ataimsist kusimama kwenye hekalu aitishe that you itolewe lakini itafika kiwango baada ya miaka tatu na nusu wa Israeli watafunguka macho watagundua atasema kwamba huyu si Mesaya na wataasi watakapo asi ndio vita vita kuu vita vikubwa vitatokea hizi vita ambazo vitatokea sio amagadon sio vita za mwisho ni vita tu za pale katikati vitakapoanza kupiganwa itabidi sasa wa Israeli watoroke watoroke kabisa ndio sasa Yesu atakuja aweze kuwatetea na kuleta amani na atakapoleta amani Yesu kwa sababu atashuka na wateule wataishi mji wa Jerusalem mimi sielewi watu watatoshea lakini maandiko yanasema kwamba watatoshea with god all things are possible <coughs> Nikurudishe katika Genesis kwanza before niendelee. Maana unakuta katika the seven days Mungu aliumba dunia. Unakuta na Mungu akasema kwamba let there be light and there was light. Na akasema kwamba let the light separate from the darkness na kukakuwa na mnayo. But elewa wakati Mungu alisema let there be light hakukuwa na jua. There was no sun anywhere. Kabisa lakini kulikuwa na mwangaza. Then baadaye ndio Mungu akakuja akaleta mambo ya jua, akaleta mambo ya nyota lakini mwanzo kabisa alisema let there be light and there was light so if the bible says or the word of god says that wateule wote watatoshea Jerusalem whatever happens i don't know but the one thing i know is that god is not a liar neither is he son of man to lie but whatever he has said must come to pass so wateule wote watakuja kulingana na verse 14 na revelation verse 14 ya Luke chapter 1 na revelation chapter 19 itakuja kutimia So Yesu atakuja atashuka pale Jerusalem na wote waliokoka watakaa pale Jerusalem na haimaanishi mtu wa Mungu kwamba dunia itakuwa imeisha ah ah dunia na mambo yote yanayotendeka kwa saa hizi itaendelea vile inavyoendelea saa hizi wafanyabiashara watafanya biashara waizi wataendelea kuiba lakini sasa Yesu atatawala kwa miaka elfu moja. baada ya miaka elfu moja, ndio sasa antichrist ambaye sorry the, the, the Lucifer wakati wote atakuwa amefungiwa kwenye shimo ndio atakapofunguliwa aachiliwe kwa muda mfupi naye atainuka na kuzunguka dunia mzima kushawishi ulimwengu mzima awaambie kwamba huyu jamaa anaitwa Yesu ametunyanyaza tujipange na silaha tuende tumalize na dunia majeshi ya dunia mzima italenga Jerusalem ama Israel kumaliza Yesu na mabunduki na masilaha lakini Yesu atawamaliza mara moja na ndio sasa unakuta kwamba Uh, tunaongea mwanzo verse 14 na ndio kuna sasa verse 15 inaambatana na hiyo maana verse 15 nasema kwamba and behold the lamb come with 10000 of his saints so atakapokuja shenje Yerusa na kutawala na maelfu waliotembea kwa utakatifu na haki watatawala pamoja na kule Jerusalem baada ya miaka 1000 ambayo nimekutajia na niko na maandiko hapo siku hizi saa hizi kuna maandiko tayari ya kusupport hiyo baada ya miaka 1000 shetani ambaye atakuwa amefungiwa ataachiliwa baada ya kuachiliwa vile nimesema hapo hapo awali atageusha ushe dunia mzima waende wavamie Yesu Kristo akiwa kule Jerusalem na watakapokuwa kimvamia wamesema kwamba wanataka kumaliza ndio verses 15 itakuja kutimia sababu sasa Kristo Yesu atainuka na atashinda mataifa yote atahakikisha kwamba wote wameshindwa na baada ya kushindwa baada ya kushindwa ndio sasa tutakuja katika the judgment seat of god verse 15 to execute with the of us to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them all the ungodly deeds that they that which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken na ndio nakuta bila zungumza kwamba na vitabu vikatolewa na kitabu kikatolewa yoyote ambaye jina lake kupatikana katika kitabu cha uzima wa milele ali hukumiwa waliopatikana katika kitabu cha uzima wa milele walipata uzima walipata uzima lakini sasa vitabu vitakavyofunuliwa ndio kila mtu atahukumiwa kulingana na matendo yake mwenyewe hebu tuone maandiko 
Hey, neno la Mungu ni tamu. Okay, tuko kwa Bible verse 20. Tuko verse 20 ya book of Revelation chapter 20 sorry, tuko chapter 20 the book of Revelation tuko pamoja na the book of Jude verse 15. Verse 15 the book of Jude nasema hivi to execute judgment upon all and convince all that there are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, the matendo ya dhambi, which they have ungodly committed, wametenda bila mungu, and of all their hard speeches, wamezunguza maneno mazito, kama kusema mungu ha exist. God is just an imagination, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, ukikunja kwa chapter 20, chapter 20, Acha tuanze verse 7. Ndio mshike kule nenda. Ah. Acha tuanze verse 5. Ni masumi sarimi lakini Bible said. But the rest of the world, but the rest of the dead live to not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed are the, is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. So, yes, or the Rudi Kunola boy, the proof of Pasababa Kubata, number six, 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 what a fuku that the Kaola Pamoja Christo. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corner quarters of the earth, go and muggle to gather them to gather to battle, the number of whom is as the sun of the sea. So nashika mtu mtu wa Mungu akomba shetani ataachiliwa baada ya miaka 1000 atazunguka juu ya mzima na kushika kila mtu waende wapamie ambao bila sababu kwamba hawana namba ni wengi mno and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and the them. and the devil that would deceive them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat in it from, for who fled the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were giant out of those things which they were written in the books according to their works. So in the Mesel Gomba, Okitoka, ye verses 14, Ambayo, Enoch alitabiri na Jude aka, aka refer to zimefuatana na pata verses 15 in the book of Jude. Mano kuda verses 15 sa kwa to execute judgment upon all and convince all that are ungodly. Yo nakuta katika uh, Revelation chapter 20 inazungumzia maile misari tumesoma. Inazungumzia hiyo. So eneo mtu wa mungu kwa mba Enoch aliona hii mambo kabla yesu wa jakufa msalabari. Eno aliona hii mambo kabla nyanyakuliwa na mungu. By the time Jude wanaandika, Eno kalikuwa lienda miaka katla indio enda. Lakini sasa Eno kalieza kuona kitabu ya revelation. Na diyo nakuta John the Apostle hanapu andika hii mambo, anaandika ufuno kutoka kwa mungu amba nipatia Christo, Christo akapatia malaika, malaika akapatia John, John akaandika. Meaning that Eno alieza kuletua katika hii wakati na mungu. Na akaeza kuonesha kile kitakacho tendeka. So kwa hivyo mtu mtu wapo soma maandiko, ni vizuri utafute kuelewa. Ni vizuri utafute kufahamu. Uzisome tu na usema kwa mana hii kweli inakai ni maandiko ambaye navutia. La hasha, Biblia haiko kutufutia. Biblia haiko kutufraisha. Biblia iko kutufundisha na kutayarisha. Yani mamu atakaya kuja. Ndiyo mana maandiko na sema kwa mba, tusikai kama watu wa mwana wana wagiza, Ama hawaelewe chochote. Maani wana sawa kumba, sisi ni wana wanuru. Hatulali usiku wala mchana. Katika uli mungu wa rohoni tuko macho. Tunaelewa kile mungu wa mepanga. Maana bibina sawa kumba, roho mtakatifu atakapo kuja. Atafunulia mambo inaya kuja. Things to come, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. But now my brother, my sister, it will depend on your relationship with God. It will depend on your commitment to the things of God. So that we na communion, na fellowship, na relationship, Na roo mtakatifu mweza kukunenea about things to come. 
Because when we talk about that, the will of Christ, we are so many of us that are deaf and blind. Yet we are born again. Ambaye na tuonesha na kwamba tumejitolea kwa Mungu kwa Mungu na katika shughuli zake na katika mambo yake. So in the process unakuta kwamba the Holy Spirit anashindwa ku communicate na wewe. Anashindwa kupata revelation of things to come. Anashindwa kupata revelation and guidance on how you are supposed to live simply because not that the Holy Spirit anataka kuongea na wewe but you are too busy with your own issues na shughuli za kila siku pako umefungia roho mtakatifu nje that house communicates now so ndio nakuta mtu wa Mungu maandiko yanaposema kwamba eno kaliona na akasema John the apostle akafunuliwa na akaandika so kile kimebaki ni mimi na wewe tujue how do we stay in these times how do we live these times mtu wa Mungu kabla siendelea verses uh, 16 Nikipenda kuja katika ibada hapo kidogo. This world we are living in. It is so attractive. Hii dunia tunaishi ni amu. Maisha dunia ni mazuri sana. Especially ukiangukia kwa kitu kwa mfuko. Utaishi kama mfalme. Utadeva vile unavyotaka. Na utakuta kwamba usipojichunga, utasahau kwamba sisi ni wapita njia. And then the issues of this world. Unakuta most of us majority of us we are so focused on the things of this world we forget that we are we are we are, we are passers through sisi ni wapita njia at one time or another we must live to bend to spend we must live you agree you cause to agree we must live the time factor you have to do it but in the fullness of time each one of us at his own appointed time lazima tuondoke so unakuta and your man is also saying what shall it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul in hell so it is up to you to move because already kila tumeona in the book of June already there are things that have been prophesied and they are coming to pass they are in the future but they definitely come to pass so unakuta jina ndio kusema kwamba of all that God which they have and godly committed and of all the hard speeches which and godly things are spoken against him these are mamas mamaras complainers walking after their own lust and their mouth speaking great swelling words having men's passions in admiration because of advantage so ukikuta why is it that judah na lamika mapa ya hawa jamaa kazi ya kunungunika these are mamaras complainers what are going to mama 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 na unakuta if there is one sin that god hates it is the sin of mamare iko nungunika kunungunika unanungunika kuso mchungaji wako na unungunika kuso mambo ya mungu una complain hapa na if there is a problem go and face that pastor go and face that person ambao kama mchungaji hapa kwa hivi na hivi kuliko kumama when you mama you plant a seed of discord unakuta kwa mambo unakutana na ndugu anasema river side kuna kaa kuna kaa that is mamare na wewe pia unakaa pale unaanza kuchangia na ni kweli ni mama alikuwa anaona nini 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 yeye tumesahau kwamba river side is not about a person is not about an individual but that is about the kingdom of god the only business we are doing here is the business of the kingdom of god we are gathered here because of jesus christ kama si yesu kristo alikuwa kusanyika hapa kama si kristo alikuwa kwenye river side ministry we are here because of primarily because of jesus christ So when your mama again is that which is godly ordained unajiletea shida. Let me give you an example of what happened of people who mama. Fungua kwa hoja nami at the book of uh, First Corinthians 10 to oh, First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10. Dio jue uh, when Judah the people of Israel these people are going to to execute judgment upon them because one of the things they did and godly speeches have spoken against him they have murmured against god so si lazima mama uanze kunungunika na mungu direct unaweza nungunika kupitia uh, what you think is rightfully you as unaona kama unanyanyaswa first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 unasema hivi I believe by the grace of God mtu wa Mungu amefika hapo Tuanze verse 6 But 
watch a melody of verse 5. Ah, watch a melody of verse 6 from the part of the whole context of the soul. And did all drink, the, and did all drink the same spiritual food? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So the Kisimau for verse 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, Kwanza, Unakuta maandiko na zumbuzia, vile wana wa Israeli kutoka misri, walipo kuwa jiani, wakakosa maji. Musa kambia nena na mchiwe, nitoe maji wana wa Israeli wakunyu. Wakanimwe kambia gonga chiwe, nitoe maji wana wa Israeli wakunyu. So Paul na pangatika maandiko na sema kwamba, uote waliona huu mujiza. Jiwe mwamba, ambasi kawaida kutuwa maji. Ulitua maji. Kitu ambacho ilikuwa ni supernatural. Na pili eleo kwamba wana Israeli, walikuwa melalamika. Wakakua mezumumuzia kusu vila na kufa na kiu. Ikabidi Musa afanye mujiza kupitia kwa magizo na neno na mungu. Mungu ni mnenea kambia kufanya hivi. Sasa mwamba ambani Kristo Yesu ndio maniko na tuambia. Ukatua maji wakapata usima. Maji mba haikuwa ya kawaida. Mana kabla wafike pale, palikuwa ni jango. Kabla wafike pale, hakukuwa na maji. Lakini walipo fika, Musa kanena na jiwe, ama Musa kagonga jiwe, likatoa maji. Diyo kwa 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 this was a spiritual rock, giving spiritual supernatural waters from supernatural source. Lakini na saa ukiendelea pasifansi kwa kwa with many of them, God was not well pleased. For there were for they were in the world of a throne in the wilderness. Now, these things, God was also at the book of Corinthians, but as we go. So, God was also at the book of Corinthians, and now we are going to go to the book of Now, these things were, these things were our example to the intent, we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. One of the things they lasted afterwards, Tumekaa pila kukula nyama mungu. Tunataka tumekufa njaa, tunakula nyama siku mingi. Eh, mungu tunakula nyama, tunakula nyama. Na saizo mtu mungu nakuta, mungu walikuwa nafanya mana inanyesha. Wanendo nakuta mana wanakula. And I know God being God in his divine wisdom, alijo katika mana, whatever they needed to, to for their nutrition, ilikuwa already compacted. Ikakuwa fitted in that mana. Kiasi yakomba, you needed nothing more. It was sufficient that man. Lakini kwa sababu maniko na sokomba, walikuwa na tama. Tama yu wanyanyasa. Wakaza, mungu lazima tukule nyama. Lazima, we must eat meat God. We must eat meat God. We must eat meat. Yo maniko na tukomba, yu na mungu wakakasirika. Kwa sababu ya tama zao. Haka amurisha kwele. Wajaluna wa samanga aluru. Walio na itanga isindu. Sijua, sijua kama wana itanga nini, but whatever unaita. Na kama mna kumuka miaka katai liyo pita kuna hivi ya shari ya kweli ni kwa mbamba. Watu walipoteza pesa. Waka nuhuza mayaki. Ato nambio mayi moja kweli ni miya moja ta miya mbini. Iyo biya shari ni noga. Nimi karibu nigie kwa hiyo majaribu lakini mungu wali niokuwa siku ingie kwa hiyo biya shari. So, kwa hiyo kumancha kwa mba kweli zilikuwa na mana ta siku za bibilia. Diyo manuwa sa kwa Mungu akakuliza upepo, kakuja ukangusha makweli. Kwa kwa nini? Katikati ya wana wa Israeli. Wakaopota makweli, wakakula makweli. Maniko sabo, kabla. Hata wameze. Wakanza kufurukua na magonjo. Mana mungu alikasirika na wawo. Na kwa nini alikasirika na kwa sababi ya tama. Si kwa sababi ya kukula kweli, kwa sababi ya tama. It is last that drove them. When you look at what is last, last is going after something that is not rightfully yours. You don't have a una kimbiza na kitu amacho si chako. Tako kwa mfano wapa, mfano ni andile, kuna wakati fulani ndo mfano ni alikuja kanyambia. Mchungaji, kambia yesa, unajota kutamani muke wako ni dhani. Nikamuza nduku, are you sure? Kanyambia, nikambia nduku sasa hapa mepoteza network. Because there is no way ni tutamani muke wangu. Nitatamani je shati ambayo nimevaa koti nimevaa ndio tairman si ni yangu nikitaka si ninachukua tamaa inaingilia wapi tamaa inapatikana wakati kitu ambacho si chako unakitaka hapo sasa ndio utakuwa unatafuta mbinu juu chini ya kupata kile kitu kwa sababu si chako sasa umesukumwa na tamaa that's what you call last if you are married your wife you cannot last over your wife 
You cannot last after your husband. Wewe sitamani mke wako, sitamani mume wako. Ukimtaka anaambia baby sweet and sweet potato, my sweet orange, boiled egg. Na anaingia box. Wala sifi. Simple. Hapa kuna tama. Na anaingia box za mada na kusimama sema you are also my tomato sauce. Na Yesu ni bwana. So the gang and look there's no way you can last after your wife or your husband. Chako ni chako si cha jirani ni chako. Sasa hawa waliingiwa na tamaa. That's why God judged them not because of anything else. Maana wanaweza kusema now these things were we this thing were our example to the intent we should not last after evil things that they as they also lasted. Tusije tukaingia na tamaa vitu ambazo si vyetu. Tuchukue kilicho chetu tubaki nacho. Alafu akaingia kwa sasa na zungumza mambo ya Donatus uh, people set up and rose wakaingia katika salamu ndio wakati Musa alikuwa mlimani wakakula wakakunywa wakaamua kutikatika na wakaingia katika wakaingia katika basi zetu na zungumza kile walifanya neither let us communicate uh, let us not commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day by day 3 and 20000 wakati Musa alikuwa kutoka mlimani alikasirika kuwapatia judgment Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Hii tunakumbuka, maana nyoka waliachiliwa kaamu manyoka wakaambia ukiinua macho tu, nyoka ameinuliwa, ukiinua macho utapona. So Mungu akaachilia nyoka pale kwa sababu ya tabia zao. Neither verse 10 tulikuwa neither mama hii as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. So simply because they murmured against the servant of God Moses. They murmured against Moses and Aaron. Na wakaangamizwa. Na unakuta some of the people ambao walimama against Moses kwa kina Kora, kina Dada, kina Abraham. Waka raise rebellion. They murmured and said kwa bu jamaa la kifani mtakatifu sana. Hata sisi tumetu watakatifu tumejezwa na roho. Hata sisi ni walau Musa na Aaron na Miriam dada yao wote ni walawi kama sisi. We have a similar anointing. In fact, Miriam alikuwa prophetess. Mwa Aaron alikuwa prophet. Wote ni wa mama moja, baba moja. Wakaanza kunungunika. Sasa wewe, wewe ni mdogo wetu. Unatuletea nini? Wewe unaleta ujuaji. Ndio maana kuna sababu kwamba because they murmured against Moses, sababu ya kuwa mwanamke kutoka Africa, Miriam akashikwa na ukoma. So, when you mama, you are bringing a problem to yourself. If things are not okay the way you want them to be okay, tafuta mtu ambao unataka na kuongea na go and express your your, your issues for you to be able to do me and dad and these things are like this like this and i need us to correct and to go and let instead of to after my sympathizers who can now wanza kunungunika kinyume cha ule mtu na especially mtu ambaye ni mungu amemtia mafuta na anamwita mwanza kunungunika kinyume chake na yeye katika maybe katika njia moja ama nyingine hajui kama amekosea hajui kama ameenda kinyume na chochote kile yeye katika mawazo yake na akili yake anafikiria ako sawa sawa lakini nyinyi muona makosa mnaanza kulalamika so when you start murmuring it brings judgments to yourself hebu nataka tuangalie kwa saa moja we may be finished in the next a few minutes numbers chapter 14 verse 27 we are talking about uh murmuring numbers chapter 14 verse 27 Numbers 14:27 inasema hivi Hebu tuanzie verse 24 Numbers 14 verse 24 but our focus in 27 as but my servant Caleb because he has he had another spirit with him and has fully followed my and has followed me fully He will never bring it to the land where he went and the sea shall possess it. The Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Two more turn you and get you in the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to unto Aaron saying, How long shall I labor with this evil congregation which mama against me? I have had the mamarets of the children of Israel. which they mama against me say unto them as truly 
as surely as I as I live, says the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. So Nakuta, the hour Jamal has a Kunumunika, eh, Mungu you, the Mungu in a gani, I'm a tutor Jangwani, I'm a tutor misery, I'm a good of the two papa, a tujani, the water malenge, the watermelon misery, who you mungu and that to Mazana Majitu. So they come. Continue to murmur against God. They continue to speak negatively against God. One thing most of us forget, which is common to every believer and unbeliever, there are times in Africa that come share to Tunasaukomba God is all hearing and God is all seeing. We forget that thing sometimes. And you know, kutoto na kujificha kwa kona sewa kwa tunafanya siri. Na maaliku na sewa kwa chochote kilicho fanya kwenye giza, kite wako wansi dunia mzima ijue. So please, mtu wa mungu, don't think, just because mkwa wili, you can speak in mama in silence, or speak kwa mungu wa siki. Nyo hata, hata uh, ukiangele okay, kwenye ni Solomon, haka anika kwa mba, usisengenye mfame katika chuma ziandani, ukuta ziko na masikio. Na kasuzu kwa mba ndenge fulani itafikisha reporti. So when your mama again is somebody, be 100% sure. Somebody somewhere, Adamu kaenda kusema. Hata kama ni beshti lako. Siku mwenye tuta fiatu kwa tuwa shiko na karo fulani ukuta merokopwa. Unajua tulikuwa na na otenyo, na halikuwa na sema. Alize, that's what otenyo mwenye katika hekima zake nyingi hata uliza tanyamasa tu. Mana kwa na hekima nyingi. But that's not mean ya kwamba hajui. So we must be careful on what we speak and when we mama, when you are gathered with friends. Because it's in the fullness of time, he could do as much as we can do. That's why I put a comma. Judah and Sema, Judah and Sema, but these guys, these guys, verse fifteen, these are mamalas, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaks great soothing words. So, na taka ni wuli zani ni mwasom wuli pitia reprema di kama mimi. What is the difference between the murmuring and the complaining? Hello, I want to look at this. You know, Monica, na, eh, yote. What the fuck you want? When you do that, we go and we are going to make a song. 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 We are going to Believers are called they are mamaras and complainers. Mamaras and complainers. So in apples we see among mamaras and complainers. What you talking about? You mangalia mamaras. Ebu tu angalie a mamba complainers. Philippians chapter two verses four. Ndaka ni malizi. Philippians two fourteen to fifteen. Philippians chapter 2 verses 14 to 12 or 15. To some. Philippians chapter 2 chapter 2 verses 14. I'm going to say to answer 11. And that every time should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to win and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So, kienda kwa NIV, so NIV na tumia neno complaining. King James na tumia both words as mamare. And disputing. Ocha tuangalie NIV na semaj. Uh, 
Yes. So Philippians quite and I even I say my uh Philippians nine no uh, sorry and I even I know guess I do going in and do everything without grumbling or arguing. Grumbling so do all things without murmuring, grumbling, complaining, disputing, disputing ni kupinga. You're disputing the authority, you're disputing the decision that has been made. That is not disputing. That's when you combine disputing, murmuring, and complaining, gambling, and so on. And Bible does not combat that you may be blameless and harmless. So you may be blameless because you can't get a lot of money. Because you decided, I'm doing all things to for, for the sake of the kingdom of Christ. Whatever I do, I'm doing it to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, verses 15, do everything, uh, do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Yani, katika kule kufanya, unajua it is easier. Ukijituma, kuliko ukitumwa. Wana sifuwe? Ukijituma, mano mejitolea, utafanya na bidi. Ukitumwa, ata kasipika kepesi kama kuna kama ni kilomia moja. Sababu mwe wako hauko pale, unendo ukinungunika na hizi kasipika kepesi, kuna pepe, hiyo, pepe, 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 pepe. Sababu kuna grumbling na ni mwako. Lakini ukisema kumba, this is my portion, this is my part, I have to do it because it's kufanya, Therefore, in the same in the same breath of the Kwamba, it is no longer a burden. It becomes joyful. It becomes a part of the Freya Kwanza Kufanya. Come on to an Afghana Paspia and Afghana Kwanza Viti. Ukishika Kapom to Mambe Nani Kwanza this side of the Kuja. At the Kuja side, the Moja Kilamika, Yapilia Kilumunika, and the other Potea. That doesn't mean I have a Paka Church. One of me, not a mini house guard. Houseboy. When you buy a mouse a houseboy, a mouse girl quick. But anyway, what did you buy against my title? So, now to my Zena verses, uh, your Jude. Was it your year the next verse, and then we move on. Verses uh, of uh, 15. Coming to judge and to convict of them that are the ungodly acts have committed the godless of what they defined words and godly sinners have spoken against. These people are grumblers, the folders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. So, in order for you to be able to counter that, and I'm going to the last scripture, then to talk the there. We'll continue to see verse 16, man of Jamalizan and I, but to counter that, I don't want to read the book of verses chapter 5, verses 18. Verses 5, 18. I love you. We'll continue with verses 16. 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 Matthew 16, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 